Welcome back. Uh, in the previous videos, we talked about um, how hemoglobin, hemoglobin could bind oxygen, right? And we had an equilibrium reaction between hemoglobin and oxygen in which those two molecules are in equilibrium with the complex of hemoglobin and oxygen, right? And depending on what conditions we have, we could favor either direction, right? And so what we have to realize is there exists some percentage of hemoglobin molecules that are saturated with oxygen, right? So in other words, if I have, if I have five proteins, right? And let's say the ones that I shade in are ones that are saturated with a ligand, right? So let's say that I define a variable theta. Let's say I define theta as the, the percentage of saturated uh, proteins, right? So that becomes what? It becomes shaded, the shaded circles over shaded plus non-shaded, right? In other words, that's equal to shaded circles, right, divided by the total circles, right? So that's effectively, if I define theta as that, I'm defining it as the percentage of colored circles, right? So what is it? Well, it's equal to 3 over 5, which is, what, 0.6? So 60% of those circles are shaded. And we can apply a similar thing with proteins, right? Let's say I have an equilibrium reaction. Very generally, is I have a protein plus a ligand is in equilibrium with the protein ligand complex, right? Well, what can I do? I can say that Ka, okay, this is my equilibrium constant, right? Um, note that this Ka, this is an uppercase K, this is an uppercase K, right? But know that this is not acid constant. This isn't what we're going to define is we're going to define an affinity constant, okay? So the A stands for affinity, right? And the affinity constant is defined as, we're going to define it as the concentration of the complex divided by the concentration of the protein times the concentration of the ligand. That's just your equilibrium expression, right? So that's your equilibrium expression. You did these whenever you did uh, in general chemistry when you tried to determine Ka's, pKa's, and so forth. This is just your general chemistry, okay? Now, one thing I can do is let me, let me multiply both sides by concentration of the ligand. Okay? And you'll see where I'm going with this in a few minutes, but suffice it to say for now, I can basically get, I can solve for the concentration of the complex divided by the concentration of the protein, right? Well, now what I have is I have an expression that relates protein ligand complex with the actual protein uh, concentration, right? Now, if I go back up here, if I go back up here to my picture, right, what did we say? We said that theta, which is basically the percentage of, of colored circles, was equal to the total number of shaded circles divided by the number of shaded circles plus the non-shaded circles. So you could effectively say that that's the number of shaded circles divided by the circle total, right? And we can make a similar argument with uh, the proteins, right? I can say that theta is equal to the percentage of saturated proteins with ligand, right? So what is that going to be equal to? Well, if you're talking about saturated ligands, what you're talking about is the protein ligand complex, right? So theta would therefore be equal to the con this concentration of protein ligand complex divided by the concentration of protein ligand um, complex plus protein, right? So what's your total amount of protein? Well, it's the total of non-bound protein versus un, uh, versus bound protein, right? So these proteins right here have the ligand, these do not, right? So that's your total amount of protein, and the theta is the percentage of saturated protein with ligand, so it's the quotient of protein-ligand complex divided by, um, divided by 
uh, the total protein, right? So how would I find? How would you find the um, the percentage of the um, of the non-bound protein? Well, you just take one minus theta, right? But it turns out that finding the the uh, protein ligand complex concentration is very difficult. So what we want to do is we want to figure out a, a means of figuring it out by getting protein ligand concentration in terms of variables that we can measure. And we started to do that here. So notice I have that I have the, that Ka times the ligand concentration is equal to the protein ligand complex concentration divided by the protein concentration. Well, let's multiply both sides by concentration of the protein. Now I get that Ka times the concentration of the ligand times the concentration of the protein is equal to the concentration of the protein ligand. And that's good because I can't directly measure protein ligand concentration, but it's a lot easier to, to measure the Ka, the ligand concentration, and the protein concentration, right? It's a lot easier to measure those things. So now I can substitute those things in for, for this equation, right? So what's the protein ligand concentration? What's that? Well, it's just equal to Ka times the ligand concentration times the protein concentration, right? That's PL, right? I also have PL down here. Again, that's Ka times the ligand concentration times the protein concentration and then plus the concentration of the protein, right? Um, however, notice that you could potentially factor out, you could factor out concentration of P, right? So effectively what happens is concentration of P cancels, right? So it turns out that if you get theta in terms of these variables, it actually doesn't depend uh, directly on the protein concentration. So what does that simplify to? Well, it simplifies to this. Theta is equal to Ka times the ligand concentration divided by Ka times the ligand concentration plus 1. Right? And we can actually get this in another form um, where we can say that it's equal to the ligand concentration divided by the ligand concentration plus 1 over, scroll over, 1 over, 1 over Ka. And the way I got that was I divided both, I divided the numerator and the denominator by Ka, and I get this expression for theta. Okay? And that's good because I can measure the association constant. And actually the good thing about those is you can just look them up in a table, right? So they have done experiments in which um, there are many, 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 many affinity constants, or we can also call them association constants. They're tabulated at specific temperatures and with uh, specific constraints and so forth. And then we can easily directly measure the ligand concentration. And using that, we can figure out what theta is, right? We can figure out theta, right? And once we know theta, that's just equal to the total percentage of saturated proteins with ligands, right? Now, another way you might see this expression written is instead of using the affinity constant, uh, we use this relationship that Ka, the affinity constant, is equal to the reciprocal of the dissociation constant. So effectively what you get is this relationship that the affinity constant times the dissociation constant is equal to 1. Okay, So if you take the reciprocal of the dissociation constant, that's equal to the association constant. So you might also see this written, the concentration of the ligand divided by the concentration of the ligand plus the dissociation constant. And that's also, um, va uh, also valid for determining theta. Okay, So the dissociation constant, all it is is the reciprocal of the affinity constant. And, and to be honest, you can also look those up in a table. And they're really not that hard to figure out. You just take the reciprocal of the affinity constant. So um, one thing that's important to understand about the affinity constant is that you think about it as the affinity constant rises, that means that um, your um, that the, the protein binds the uh, the ligand more tightly. So we go back to our original case, right? So if I have concentration of protein and concentration of ligand, right? I define that constant as the concentration of the products divided by the product of the concentration of, of the reactants, right? So if Ka is higher, right? 
if Ka is higher, that implies that the concentration of the products is higher, right? So that means as Ka increases, the concentration of the complex between the ligand and the protein increases as well, right? By the same factor, right? Assuming protein and ligand are constant, right? So as the, as the affinity constant increases, that means that the protein binds the substrate or binds the ligand more tightly. Likewise, okay, um, what you can do is you can say that if you take the reciprocal of Ka, that essentially is Kd, right? And so if you take the reciprocal of Ka, that's, that's um, Kd, but you also have to take the reciprocal of this, right? So that becomes concentration of protein times the concentration of the ligand divided by the concentration of the complex, right? So what happens What happens is Kd increases. These increase, right? The protein and the ligand. So therefore, um, if, if you have a high dissociation constant, what that means is that um, the protein doesn't bind the ligand as tightly. So uh, something that has a high Ka will tend to have a lower Kd, right? Something that has a high Kd will have a lower Ka. So high KDs mean that um, it's that um, in general the protein doesn't bind the ligand as tightly. High KAs mean that the protein binds the ligand more tightly, and we sort of figured out this expression for theta that tells us what the percentage of um, percentage of, of, of proteins that are bound by ligands. Okay, and the 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 the, the um, the, the effectiveness of this tool is because we can we, we, we can look up KAs and KDs in tables. Okay, um, a lot of times in, in, in textbooks and it, a lot of times teachers will put in powerpoints. They'll say, oh, this this particular protein has a KA for this ligand of su of such and such. Right? You can look those up in a table, and if you're doing an experiment at a particular set of conditions, you can look up the KA or the KD, and you can add a certain amount of ligand. Right? And um, you know the concentration of the ligand, and so you can discover what the percentage is. Okay. Likewise, um, if you know theta, right, because you know the ligand concentration, if you know theta, the percentage, right, if we come back over here, if you know theta, right, if you know theta and you know your protein concentration, you can solve for the protein ligand concentration, right? So you just have a univariable function at that point. You know what theta is. Assuming you know what the protein concentration is, you can directly solve for protein ligand concentration. So you might try doing that just to see if you can figure it out. It's just simple algebra from there, but you can figure out what the protein ligand concentration is, assuming you know theta. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of an intuitive sense on um, the equilibrium expressions. And this, is, this, um, this type of equation, we'll see it again um, when we look at enzyme function. See you soon.